Hi, everybody. It's Ryan Seymour, King of Comic Town here in Columbus, Ohio, for this episode, this very special solo flight episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. Uh, Vic is out of town celebrating a marriage in his family in Puerto Rico, so he's very, very fortunate to enjoy that great weather. Uh, and here we are going to read, review, and recommend several books for you for this week. All right, so these first three books are ones that, if you've got some extra scratch, I think you'll really, really enjoy. But this week, this week also was ridiculous. There was just a ton of books throughout, up and down. So these ones are just my suggestions. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. All right, so starting off, Amazing Spider-Man number 33. Uh, Zeb Wells, Gleason, and Menz are the creators of Note on it. This is a weird one for me because it's Peter Parker, but like dark Peter Parker. Uh, he is going after this iteration of Craven the Hunter for mean things that he's done to Norman Osborn. And it is it is dark. Like he's hunting Craven. Uh, he's got his black suit on again. Uh, he's using like it's he's knocking people's teeth out that were just innocent bystanders that were brought into to this whole thing. So if you're looking for Spider-Man just going off on somebody this is a hundred percent the book for you i really enjoyed it uh, i love spider-man almost as much as two of my kids all right so next up this is a weird one for me because this is like branching out i'm there are some manga that i like like i love naoki urasawa's monster like that that's just absolutely amazing to me and then there's other manga that i'm just not i don't know if i'm the target audience for but dc is now doing a line of manga and this week they dropped uh batman justice busters they dropped superman meshi and this one which i really really enjoyed joker so joker one operation joker is the title it's volume one um it is messed up jacked up joker is just fully insane and he's at the start of it, he's battling Batman, and Batman falls into a vat of chemicals. And in the process, Joker's like, no, I can't, I can't let you die. And he's holding on to the cape, the cape comes off. It's, there's a baby that is caught up in this. And so Joker, in his delusional, psychotic thought process, thinks that Batman has turned into a baby. So Joker now has vowed to raise the baby to be the next Batman so that he can show how weak justice is it's just crazy it's joker with a newborn so like everything that goes along with having a newborn around except joker dealing with it like people bringing the doorbell uh door dashing just it's oh my gosh it, it was really really hysterical the art is really cool um yeah no i was i was really pleasantly surprised and if the rest of the dc manga line is this good i think they've got a hit on their hands all right Lastly, from my suggestions, Batman 137. Um, this is the second part of the story arc that started last week's uh, Gotham War. And in Gotham War, um, and it's just waking up from the Dark Knight's terror, or the Dark, yeah, that abomination miniseries that happened a couple months ago. And Catwoman has figured out that you can reduce the violent crime in Gotham if you manage it. If you have people only attacking, like instead of you know, robbing someone in an alley, you, know, you break into some rich person's apartment and you steal from them. And so she has formed this kind of union and they've reduced violent crime in Gotham by 50 percent. Batman's not on board with this. He, he has a very binary thought process. Something is either a crime and should be stopped and punished or it's not. And there's no sliding scale of like, well... You know, if this is a safe robbery where nobody gets hurt, it's better. And so he just has like it's it's weird because it's almost like it's a combination of his morals and ethics along with this battle with his ex. Like he and he and Selena are not seeing eye to eye and they're also letting themselves get in between it. And in this issue, violent crime is going on and it's Batman. Batman is going on his his justice crusade selena is not okay with it and so she's trying to, to battle back in her own way but it's leaving a vacuum where all the real violent rogues gallery members for batman are like okay what do we do and can we like capitalize on it and there's a roundtable discussion that is just going to be 
bad news bears for Gotham. So I highly recommend it. Pick it up. Uh, also, your, your local shop should have the, the precursor one shot Gotham War to, to pick, pick up as well. All righty. So we're going to take a little break so I can drink some water and then uh, we'll come back with the must reads for the week. Alrighty, welcome back to Black, White, and Red Over. Once again, I'm Ryan Seymour, King of Comics, out here in Columbus, Ohio. Normally, Vic is with me, but he is coming back from a wedding in Puerto Rico. Not his wedding, but a family member's wedding. All right, so these three books next are the ones that I think are must-reads, that you can't miss. That Well, there's one of them that's a Ryan book, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one last. So these are the, the best books of the week, in my opinion. All right, so from DC Comics, we've got Birds of Prey, number one. Uh, Thompson, Romero, and Belair are the creators of Note on it. And this is, it, it is dope. I was not expecting it to be as good as it is. Like, the, the creators on board, you know it's going to be quality. But to have it all come together so well, it's kind of like a, uh, not a, a reverse heist. There's somebody that's in trouble, and Black Canary Dinah is putting together a team that's going to be called Birds of Prey to go rescue this person. And it is not a team from like old iterations of Birds of Prey. Like there's a couple members that are similar, but it's a five person team. And the art style is so cool. It is, I'm trying to find a page that won't spoil anything. So you can get a look at it. Yeah, we'll do this. All right. So it's got this like real almost indie comic vibe to it that just really sets the book apart from your usual like Batman shelf filler stuff and, or Bat Family shelf filler stuff. So it's got this great indie vibe art-wise. The characters all fit this, this vibe that, that's like almost Ocean's Eleven-ish where they're putting together a caper to, to break this person out. And this team is just a combination of people that... You, you, you would crap your pants if you were threatened by almost all of them and they throw in this wild card character. That's going to make them just even more terrifying. I can't wait to see how they get, break this person out. I do have some questions because there's some ages listed of certain characters and I'm not sure how that fits into DC and timeline What's at, at, as of right now. But really, really amazing, good first issue. All righty. Sacrificers number two, uh, Rick Remender, Max Fiumara, uh, Dave McKegg, uh, the creators listed on this one. Uh, this is one we reviewed issue one, and we were initially we were worried that it was going to be like uh, seven to eternity, a very you know, fantasy world setting, uh, characters on a mission, and Remender has not written a sequel to it. It's not re retreading the same ground. It's every certain time period uh there is a harvest and families have to give up and sacrifice one of their kids the those people that are then taken and we don't nobody knows what happens with them they just disappear and so we're we're with this harvest's crop of kids and we're running into like we're finding out the different cultures involved because it's it, it's multi-ethnic uh, there's like orca people there's pigeon people uh there's things that look human and like one of the it, it's weird because one of the one of the factions actually looks at it as a huge honor and you know they they you know hook the person up that's going to be the sacrifice with like great clothes great food for the trip and then we've got others where the 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 sacrificed people are like the lowest tier in in their in their village or in their area and so it's like this really interesting combination of how these how the different people look at it, how those people interact with each other. And, oh my gosh, we find out, we, we find out a little bit more. They get to the place they're going and it was not, 
even remotely what I expected, uh, which is, is great. I love when I can't figure out what's going on in a book. Uh, so yeah, totally recommend it. Once again, it's number two. Uh, number one is should be available on your local comic shops shelves. All right. So this one is, is a Ryan book. Uh, I'm just going to admit that right now. Uh, we got Zach Thompson writing, uh, Valerie Burzo and Jason Wordy also listed as creators on it. It is Hunt for the Skinwalker. And this is based, based on the Skinwalker Ranch out in Utah, which is a place that has crazy stuff happening uh, all the time. You got UFOs, uh, you've got cryptids, you've got other like paranormal stuff happening, stuff going missing. Uh, there's like weird rules like you're not supposed to dig because if you dig, bad stuff happens. And it starts with the Gorman family and how they were really trying to like, you know, we're going to take all our money, we're going to make a ranch, we're going to you know, herd cattle, we're going to like, this is going to be our American dream. And it's not. It is. It goes so wrong for them. Um, and this is based on true story, depending on how you want to want to believe it. Uh, but they encounter skinwalkers, which are evil uh, witches. Might might be a good way to describe them. Uh, they encountered that. They encountered.